In this video, I'm going to talk about what are NFTs. Like, what are they? How do you get involved? How do you even begin? And how one simple, simple photo sold for over $1 million. It's shocking. Welcome to the new world of capitalism. So I'm going to share with you the NFT that sold for a million dollars, the most insane amount of money. We're going to talk specifically to an expert, Dave Orbo. He's a friend of mine. We've done some business together. He has been immersed in cryptocurrency since it began like 2010. So he knows it all. He has helped launch NFTs, helped help launch projects, gamify projects, and has made a lot of money doing it. So let's go to the interview with Dave right now. So David, welcome to the interview here on YouTube. It's great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me, Laurel. So you're the guy I always go to when I want to know about all this new, you know, digital currency and cryptocurrency and what's going on. You've been in this space. Uh, specifically, I want to know about NFTs. So what are they? What makes them unique? How do people make money? I mean, 69 million got sold for one. Talk to me. Yeah, I, I guess the I always start with this, like non-fungible tokens, like whoa, what, what does that phrase mean? I mean, so cryptocurrency, if you're obviously familiar with that, that's fungible, right? Which means you can hold fractions of it. That's the easiest way I think it is to understand. Like non-fungible means you either own it or you don't. You, you can't own a fraction of an NFT. It's the entire thing or nothing. So yeah, the, I guess the first kind of wave of uh, the mm -hmm. NFT world started a few years back, and it was really just novelty items, collectibles, you know, just... Uh, right, right. Give an example. Like what would uh, be Crypto wrong. kitties. I mean, that that's probably one of the first. It was just these digital cats, you know, that would kind of spawn and create other cats. And, and people uh, would buy them. Yeah. Pardon? And people would buy them. Oh, they would buy them and they would appreciate in price like dramatically in a very short period of time. And then it kind of uh, crypto punks is another one that uh, started back then. And today, those like crypto punks are selling for millions of dollars. You know, you, you see a lot of people share them on Twitter. It's kind of like an elite uh, type of series. And yeah, those were just like Bitcoin. Those are worth pennies when they first came out. And now they're, you know, six, seven figures. And what people do with them. Yeah. I'm, I'm talking from the people because you know that I, you know, I, I'm on the outside and I trust you on the inside. I mean, so I'm a crypto punk. What do I do with it? What do I, <laughs> I just because it's a it's a title like yay I have one. Do I resell it to somebody? Uh, I think the smart people are reselling them right now because uh, you know, uh, see it's it's kind of NFT. Uh, projects and series are kind of in different buckets different classes like the early ones are you know getting a lot of attention because of the sales prices they're having right now but like the beeple nft sold for i believe around 60 million dollars yeah the the beeple this artist called beeple which has a very rabid he has a very rabid following for many years and he created this art piece where he created something every day for I think 10 years or even maybe 20 or something like that and put it all into this collage as one NFT and some I believe he was an East Indian billionaire bought the thing for about 60 million dollars but and the crypto punks are in the millions so it's kind of in its own like bucket that whole like big ticket NFT world because I mean how high can they go right like, is he trying to sell it for a hundred million right now? I mean, it, I mean, and then, then it reaches a billion. I mean, at some point it's just uh, getting out of control there, but you say, why, why do people buy them? Why do they collect them? It's like, it's the same question you can ask uh, to the uh, offline physical tangible item collectors. Why do you buy baseball cards for 70 years? And why does the Mickey Mantle rookie card go from a dollar to $2 million at Christie's auction? Why does that happen? You know, so this isn't anything new in that sense. Okay. Now, earlier you said there were buckets, like how to start. So obviously like the early stage. So going to take us fast forward because this video is not just for beginners. And for those of you that are listening, if this is interesting to you, 
we need feedback. If you're interested, put in the comments. This is interesting. I want to learn more. And I can bring David back. We can do a three-part series, five-part series, and really dig in deep because this man knows his stuff. So kind of give us the breadth. So you have the crypto punks and the crypto kids, the beginners, and then how does it, how does it range now? So yes, it was uh, the first year or so, it was all Ethereum, right? And now Wax comes along a couple of years ago and started gaining a lot of traction and market share because uh, it enables this ability for people to buy like micro items for 10 cents or something. And you can't really do that on Ethereum because of the gas fees. You're paying, you know, 10, 15, $20 per transaction. So Wax comes along and then a bunch of, you know, the garbage pail kids and tops and, uh, you know, the Star Trek guys, uh, Leonard Nimoy. And uh, I forgot the guy who just went to space. What is his name? Oh, uh, William Shatner. William Shatner did a series on Wax and uh, Street Fighter and all these like really popular uh, brands with that have decades of uh, traction. And they, they were just exploding. Like the entire series was selling out in hours, sometimes minutes. And then people would resell those NFTs for 10 times what they bought it for within a week. And it was just going crazy for like six, eight months like that. And, but still it was, you know, even Joel and Travis from blockchain heroes, they were, they were definitely pioneers in this space as well. And so we've got to this place where, you know, about 10 months ago, this new layer got introduced in the NFT world, which, is called staking. I mean, you may hear that term in terms of cryptocurrency uh, uh, investment strategies, but projects like Alien Worlds and Our Planet, and obviously some uh, other ones on multiple chains now, allow people to put their NFTs, lock them in a smart contract, and start earning passive income just for holding it. And now it creates this new layer of value to buy an NFT that is well beyond just collectible a collectible or a novelty item so now it's going even farther where <laughs> nfts at its core act as proof of ownership of anything and that's that's why i always remind people because yeah you saw these like novelty series but people are selling uh intellectual property they're selling patents they're selling homes cars in the form of an NFT because it's proof of ownership on the blockchain and it's tamper proof. All the elements of blockchain we've talked about over the past few years in terms of security and safety and reliability equates to an NFT as well. So, so if you're loving this, there will be more. I want you to subscribe to my channel. Like right now, I want you to subscribe, hit the notification I'm here five days a week. And while you're out there, if there's any comments, Right, this is interesting to you, not interesting, scary to some of you. I hear a lot of you say, oh my gosh, I don't know how to get involved. Stay tuned, we're gonna keep teaching you. Right now, let's go back over to our interview. So uh, that when the people buy and sell, I mean, is there a process, obviously, just for our viewers, to get back out to fiat currency? Is there a way that they can go in and come back out and actually have, you know, in their mind, have made the money because it's not just uh, a digital currency, it actually comes back out. Is there a way to go all the way through? Absolutely. And it's similar to the process of acquiring cryptocurrency where you start at Coinbase or Gemini, you buy Ethereum, you buy Wax, you know, on an exchange, and then you transfer it into your, you know, individual wallet. And with that wallet, you access the marketplaces. And it's very simple to log into the marketplace. You just click it and it reads your wallet that's open on your computer and you start trading, buying, selling, and then you know, it, like it's like eBay, right? So you, you load up your bank account with a thousand dollars. You go to eBay and have a buying spree and you have yeah. all these items. Yeah, of course you can sell them back on eBay later. And then at the end of the day, it's like, Hey, uh, after a year's time, I'm up $3,000. Same with crypto. You report your capital gains. It's just a product you're buying. And yeah, so it's not too bad once you get a hang of it. Yeah. How long, uh, when did you actually begin? I mean, yeah, I've been really heavy in the space for about a year and a half. I, I was kind of a distant viewer of the crypto kitties and punks uh, in the early days. I was watching it. I wasn't interacting with it. But yeah, once Wax started uh, really getting popular, I started getting involved in, uh, in that world. And now 
I've, I have a company called Eversmart Labs, and we are minting NFT series for big companies, big artistic projects. Uh, yeah, so we're about to launch our first charitable uh, project in the next uh, month or two. And yeah, so we should definitely talk about that because we have some key differentiators in terms of what we're doing with uh, security and file optimization, which is become a big issue with projects that are trying to stuff a lot of media into the NFT container, which is usually around two megabytes, maybe five megabytes. And they're trying to stuff like a, a gig of data into it. And they need to pay external server fees that are thousands of dollars a month. And we have this uh, technology that uh, helps to uh, protect it and uh, compress it into that container. So, yeah. Hmm. Awesome. I appreciate you so much. I love your brain and love your knowledge. Those of you that are out listening, again, go to the comments. If you want more information, just say, I love this, want to learn more, and we will be back with more interviews. David, thank you for being on our YouTube channel today. We appreciate you so much. Yeah, always a pleasure. Thank you, Laura. Thank you. Hope you enjoyed that interview with Dave. He's just amazing and such depth of knowledge. We're going to continue this education. I have had a team, expert team, building a cryptocurrency NFT course as we speak. It will be launched in the next few months. For those of you that are even interested remotely in hearing from Kelly, from David, and really learning. So you're not just hearing from the internet, you know, the bathroom wall, the good, the bad, and the interesting. These are world leading think tankers about this conversation. I want you to click on the link below. You'll get in the queue. And as soon as our cryptocurrency class comes out, we're going to let you no. In the meantime, I have the iFlip app. I want you to get used to using it. So when the digital currency platform comes, you can immediately decide what coins you want into, what do you want to start doing, and start picking your trades.